Special thanks to Jonathan for supporting my channel at patreon.com slash Christopher164. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. So I just want to share something uh, that as I was reading my Bible a couple days ago and an interesting thought. Um, this is from the New Living Translation, uh, an older New Living Translation, not the current one. But regardless, in Matthew 12, 43 through 45, it says, When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert, seeking rest but finding none. Then it says, I'll return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds its former home empty, swept and clean. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. So that person is worse off than before. That will be the experience of this evil generation. Um, I thought that was interesting. I, I think like we can think of some things. Um, I've also been reading this commentary uh, by Warren W. I guess Weezer B. And he has this amazing B series. So this is from B Loyal in relation to Matthew. And he was talking about how this was exposing like Israel back in the day. They would have idols. And then maybe a king will step in and says, no, we shouldn't have idols. Maybe he makes a law or there is some spiritual reformation. But as we have seen in like the old books in the Old Testament, like the Chronicles or the Kings, that it was just a cycle of, of them going to idols and to God and to idols. And I was just looking at that passage when that evil spirit returned to that home. It wasn't just swept and cleaned, but it was empty. I thought that was very interesting. I, I think many believers do believe that if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, then no evil spirit can take hold of you. You can't necessarily be possessed because it's filled with the Holy Spirit. What demon is going to want to stay in a house with the Holy Spirit? But I just want to also read what Mr. Weaserby said in his commentary. The primary application is to the nation of Israel, like I mentioned, especially that generation present when Jesus ministered on earth. The nation had been purged of the demon of idolatry which had plagued them in the Old Testament. But Reformation was not enough. Reformation could cleanse, but it could not fill. Nation should have received the Savior and been filled with spiritual life. Instead, the people rejected him, and the end was destruction. When I read that, what hits my mind is that you can't just give up sin and say that that things are good. No, you have to fill it with something better, which is the, the Holy Spirit indwelling inside of you. But I think what really strikes me from that is the fact that it says, Reformation is not enough. Like, think about the kings who says, Alright, no idols. And people are like, Oh, I don't want to toss out my idol. There's no willingness in there. They're forced to do something they don't want to do. So whenever that law or decision is terminated, then they can do what they want to do. I don't know if you're fully catching my drift. Let me try to explain in more explicit terms. Right now, our world is just going through a lot of crazy things right now. Especially in America right now, uh, a lot of people are calling for change. Change is good, especially if change is for the better. People want change so that this world or this country can get better. No law can dictate a man's heart. The law has its power, but it's not powerful enough to quench the evil. The law can say, do not steal. And so all good law-abiding citizens won't steal. But if someone wants to steal, what's going to hold them back? The law can't actually hold them back because their heart desires to do something. Now, the person can be punished against the law, but the law did not prevent the person from committing the crime. Does that make sense? What needs to happen is heart change. The person must decide within himself, oh, I don't want to steal. I don't want to lie. I don't want to commit adultery because I know what is better. The law is summed up in two laws. Love God and love your neighbor. If you truly love your neighbor, you won't steal from him, you won't lie from him, you won't commit adultery. Change is good, change is needed. Laws are good, laws are needed. I don't have a problem with laws. Are laws imperfect? Yes, because they are made by men and men are imperfect. But the thing is that laws aren't gonna change the person's heart. Remember the demon? 
that I mentioned. And when the demon came back to the person, the house was empty. And I'm like, no, the house needs something more than just empty. Yes, it's swept clean, but it can be made dirty again. It's more than just having a conviction of, oh, I'm not going to make it dirty. We need something more. That answer is Jesus. I truly believe Jesus is the answer. It's not to say that change shouldn't happen. If there are things going wrong, then yeah, we should be doing things. There are so many good people I know, and they're advocating for a lot of wonderful things. And I encourage them to keep doing that. If you're doing that, I encourage you to keep doing that too. But I want you to keep in mind that just because you do something, like you change a law, enact a policy or something, that's not necessarily going to change the person's heart. The person could still choose to do something against that law, against that policy, because that person does not truly love their neighbor or love God. The person's heart must be changed. The person must be convicted to truly love God and to truly love their neighbor. It comes down, I truly believe, that we need more people to be sharing Jesus, the gospel. Because if you are a Christian, your rules are to love God and to love your neighbor. Therefore, you should not be doing anything that is harmful to your neighbor. Because you should have that strong conviction to love. Are humans imperfect? Yes. Just because you become a Christian doesn't mean that you become that super saint. We do make mistakes. We should be spending our time with God that he shows us what is right and what is wrong. And if we continue to consistently spend that time with God, we will be convicted when we want to do something wrong. When you think this is not a good idea, it's probably not a good idea because you're probably not loving your neighbor as yourself or you're probably not loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. One who is a Christian will aim to glorify God in all he does. He will think before he does something. He will go out of his way to love those around him. I'm, I'm going through the book of James as well. And there's just so many practical things. Like it talks about if you know someone who says they need food and you just say, I hope you're fed. You missed an opportunity to serve someone because I bet you have food that you could give that person. Does all this make sense? That if we choose Jesus and say, yes, I believe in you, change my heart so that everything I do will glorify you, then I truly believe that's the start of something better. If we have more people committing their lives to Jesus and saying, change my heart, I want to do everything to glorify you. I want to love you with all my heart and to love my neighbor as myself. I believe that's when we'll truly see people truly loving each other that hate will no longer be because hate is not love if we love our neighbor then there will be no hatred if we truly love our neighbor then we won't text while we're driving and thus there shouldn't be any accidents i mean you could really try to just think upon this right it's just simply like being considerate and again we do make mistakes right but there is grace and god can forgive but i believe that with the holy spirit inside of us he will be saying, this is what you should do, this is not what you should do. Is this action going to show that I love God? Is this action going to show that I love my neighbor? So again, that's where I believe true change happens. When someone says, I want to believe in you, God, and show me how to love my neighbor and to love you. I believe that's where change starts. Like I said, it's not bad to be fighting for legislative change because there are some people who are called to be evangelists and some people who are called to be advocates. But just because you're an evangelist doesn't mean you can't advocate. There are moments when you have to advocate. And if you're an advocate, then there are moments where you will have to evangelize, right? It's not just one or the other. But we do need to listen to God and say, God, what do you want me to do? But for all of us Christians, there's always some room and time to evangelize. And if you don't know the way, the truth, and the life in the Bible, God the Father gave up his son, Jesus, to die for you because we are all sinful. Once we sin, we have broken God's law. And breaking God's law condemns us to hell. But God didn't want you to go to hell. So Jesus took the punishment for you. Because Jesus broke the power of death, if you choose to believe in him, then you can go and live in heaven forever. The choice is yours, but if you choose to accept him, ask him to change your heart that you will truly love. And once you do that, then I think we're one step closer to a better world because we'll have more people loving each other. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a good rest of the day and God bless you.